exciting. I just have to scan it. Right. Awesome. You are all set to go. Thank you very much. Yeah, Finally. Oh, yeah. What is going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography. And in today's video, we are unboxing the brand new desktop from Apple, the Mac. <laughs> Why did I say that like that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. We are unboxing the Mac Studio, Apple's brand new desktop computer aimed specifically at professionals who work in a studio. So photographers or videographers or graphic designers, people in those creative fields, this desktop is made specifically for them. And being a full-time videographer and video editor, I thought that this would be perfect for me. So I wanna talk a little bit about what the Mac Studio is, why I decided to get it, and we'll see if maybe this is something that you should possibly do some more research into and consider for yourself. So the Mac Studio is basically like in its functional physical form, like two Mac minis stacked on top of each other. The length and the width of the Mac Studio is the same as the Mac Mini, but it's about twice as tall. So it fits pretty comfortably on your desk. You can see here that it has four Thunderbolt 4 ports, then it has an Ethernet port, a port for power, two USB-A's, an HDMI, a headphone jack and the power button, and that's all on the back. And then there also is some fans back here for cooling. And then if we flip to the front, we have two USB type C ports and an SD card reader, which I personally greatly appreciate as a creative. Now this desktop does come with Apple's M1 chips. You can choose to get either the M1 Max or the M1 Ultra. I personally got the M1 Ultra chip in mine, which is like two M1 Max chips fused together. And the exact specs I got on mine with regard to everything are 20 core CPU, a 48 core GPU. I got 64 gigabytes of RAM and a two terabyte internal SSD. And that might seem a little bit overkill. And you know what, maybe it is. It did cost me $6,400 Canadian, which is quite a bit, but you also can't upgrade this machine later like you can with a custom PC. So if I decide I need more RAM or I want more internal storage down the road, I can't just buy more, I'm stuck with what I have. So I want to make sure that I got everything that I need and that I will need for at least the next four or five years in this machine now. I should note that this is literally just the desktop alone. This doesn't include an external monitor. This doesn't include a mouse or a keyboard. And these are things that you need to have to use this machine. So I am fortunate to already have a Samsung M8 and a Logitech MX Master and MX Keys. So I have everything that I need to work with this right away. I know Apple also sells their like Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse and they have their own studio display as well that you can go pick up if you wanna get stuff like that. But just so you know, if you're considering like this versus a MacBook Pro, like the MacBook Pro you can use right away and this you need to buy some accessories to make it work. The first thing I can note is the box has this really nice handle on it right here. When I was actually at the store, I was able to carry the Mac Studio out with this handle and I didn't really love that because I had to walk around with a box that said Mac Studio on it, which is like not something I want to be doing downtown. But, you know, it was convenient and I was able to carry it into an Uber fairly easily. And the design of the box, even as I'm opening it, seems really good. It folds open pretty easily. I probably wasn't supposed to rip that. That seems like it wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, but def I definitely wasn't supposed to rip that. So I kind of opened the box wrong. Whoops. Then right in here we have designed by California in Apple. And they've given us a little, I don't know, some startup guides and instructions. And I think we got some Apple stickers in here. Ooh, we got the very fancy, ever elusive black Apple sticker. I will be sure to put this nowhere, as I always do with Apple stickers, because I just don't know where to put them. Actually, comment below and give me suggestions on where I should put my Apple stickers. I have like a, at least three or four just laying around. I don't know what to do with them. Like, what do you guys do with your Apple stickers that you get in these boxes? I have no idea. And then we have, let's move the box out of the way here. Well, unwrap this last. And 
There we go. We have a power cable. Very cool, it seems sufficiently long, which I'm happy with. And yeah, I definitely wasn't supposed to rip this wall down. Wow, that is uh, bad. Whoops. Yeah, that seems like it is everything. Yeah, that's it. We'll get this box out of the way. And now for the ever satisfying peeling of the paper. I like that, that was really nice. So this is the Mac Studio right out of the box. There is only one color option for this. It only comes in silver. You can see at the very bottom here, the word Mac Studio is etched right onto the desktop. And here are the aforementioned ports, back and the front. And you wanna compare it to like my head, like it's not much bigger, definitely wider, but I wouldn't say taller. So like this is something you technically could bring with you if you wanted to and like compared to a custom PC that can't come anywhere with you, that was kind of something that I considered because I do travel occasionally for my work and I want to be able to maybe bring this if the job that I'm going to requires it. But the real reason that I got the Mac Studio is because in my personal situation, I've been working and editing basically everything since I started seriously pursuing video as a profession on a 2018 MacBook Pro. And don't get me wrong, that MacBook Pro is amazing and I will still keep it around and use it when I'm on the run and I love it. It's also pretty specced out, so it still kind of holds up today. But I was noticing some issues where I was like running out of application memory and applications were slowing down and I couldn't do certain things without making proxies, which for like files that I probably shouldn't have to make proxies for. And these extra steps were just really limiting my workflow, not making me as efficient as I could be. And then you add on waiting for longer export times and it just wasn't making a lot of sense for me when I get paid for the projects that I finish a lot of the time from working freelance and I can only upload to YouTube as fast as I can edit and export videos. So the goal of getting the Mac Studio was to be able to finish freelance projects faster, have more free time and be able to make more YouTube videos for you or take on more freelance projects or just have more time to do things that I enjoy outside of this office and outside of video editing. And I'm really hoping and I think that this Mac Studio will be able to do it for me. I did do my research and look at a whole bunch of tests before I was going out and purchasing the Mac Studio and I'm not gonna run a whole bunch of tests because there's so many people on YouTube who are so much better at that than I could possibly be. So I'll link some videos in the description that I watched if you wanna go see some tests on this desktop. But kind of the conclusion that I came to was if you're a working professional and you wanna future-proof yourself, you can get like a mid-tier spec model of the Mac Studio like I did, where I upgraded a couple things. I didn't jump all the way to 128 gigs of RAM, but I kept it at 64. I upgraded the internal SSD, and I just made a couple tweaks on this. But if you're not editing insane videos and you just want a really solid desktop computer to work as a video editor like the baseline mac studio should work for most people and that comes in at about two grand us i think but if you prefer apple and you want something that's capable even the baseline mac studio can do it so if you're in the market for a new computer if you want one of these new m1 chips like i did i'd recommend doing some research but definitely consider the mac studio and see if the baseline is good for you, see if the mid-tier option is good for you. You probably don't need to spend 10 grand on the most expensive option. I feel like that's always overkill. But yeah, let's get it set up. So it's the next day now and I just finished setting up my Mac Studio, so I wanna talk a little bit about what that process was like. So when I first turned the Mac Studio on, it prompted me to connect a keyboard and mouse and I tried connecting my wireless Logitech keyboard and mouse, which I'm supposed to be able to do, but it actually wasn't working. And I even went on Apple's help website and I just couldn't make it work. So I ended up having to set the whole Mac Studio up with a wired keyboard and mouse. So if you don't have like the Magic Mouse and Apple's keyboard that I would recommend, making sure you have some sort of wired solution around while you're setting up your Mac Studio. Otherwise you might run into some roadblocks. I personally wouldn't have even been able to do it if I didn't have a wired solution. 
But once I got everything up and running, it was pretty seamless. I first got to toggle with some accessibility options and I think the only thing that really applied to me was just permanently enabling dark mode, but it's nice they have lots of accessibility options there to make the computer more usable for everyone. And then it prompted me to connect an old Mac if I wanted to, which was awesome because I was able to literally peer-to-peer -peer connect my 2018 Intel MacBook Pro to my new Mac Studio and passively have it transfer all my information, all my applications, all of my settings from the MacBook Pro to my brand new Mac Studio. And I just could go off and like cook dinner while that was happening. It was great. And I came back like an hour and a half later and everything was already loaded onto my Mac Studio. And I was able to just go on and start doing stuff basically right away. And because I was coming from an Intel MacBook to an M1 based Mac Studio, I did have to actually reinstall a bunch of applications anyways, but the applications that were already there in their Intel version just prompted me to update and reinstall and I did it. It definitely wasn't like a painless process. I'd say the whole setup process in total took me like two to three hours, but it could have been a lot worse. And just the fact that I was able to migrate all of my settings and stuff saved me hours of time. So I'm super grateful for that. I definitely think it was an easy setup experience. You know, it's kind of like that Mac ecosystem where like everything's easy, everything just works. And uh, yeah, I guess that's what I pay the extra money for versus PC, but I appreciated it. It was a really nice process. If you liked this video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos on a regular basis. And I'd love to have you around for that. If you have any questions or if anything popped into your mind as a result of this video, go drop it in the comment section because I'd love to have a discussion with you down there. And I also have in the description some LUTs and some overlays available to you that you can use to make your videos look cooler. If you like the way my videos look, it's all the stuff that I use in my videos and you can go get that. I have some freebies down there that you can use. And if you want to purchase any LUTs or effects packs, that'd be an awesome way to support the channel. Anyways, that is going to be all for this video. So until next time, peace.